and welcome back to another video. It is Francesco here. Welcome to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. If you're brand new and if you're a regular, welcome back. So in today's video, what I thought I'd do is share with you guys my iPhone setup or like my what's on my iPhone. I wanted to do this a few months ago, but it's something actually that I feel like I'm quite comfortable with now. Mainly because I've got more of a more of a fluid setup that I've stuck with for more than two months and I tend to chop and change, but this one has actually stick. So I wanna share you my setup and also give you an idea for what uh, I've got on my iPhone. Um, obviously this won't just solely be productivity apps, but I hope you do enjoy it uh, as a resource. So we're gonna dive over and jump into that. So guys, just before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscription button and the bell notification for regular videos here on this YouTube channel. It'd be great to have you in the community and I'm really looking forward to you becoming part of the comments and all of the community. So guys, just before we jump in, I am still rocking the iPhone Plus um, 6, that is. So it is the one I had probably in the last one. It's a 128 gigabyte phone, so it's quite a high amount of storage. So these apps, and of course all of the apps that I store on my phone for features, will be in there still. So as you can imagine, I use a lot of apps to review. So most of them I don't tend to use on a daily basis, but I'll probably explain that in a sec. So hello everyone, here is my iPhone. Uh, hopefully you're able to see it, um, put it up on the left hand side. Um, and what I want to do today is run over how I lay out my iPhone. So here we are on my homepage. Um, just to be clear, I have two core homepages. One for my most used applications, I would say, and two for utilities. And the reason I do this is because I only really like to swipe, I guess, once, and it just makes it easier to access everything from that panel. So here is the main page. I probably access this a lot more of the time than I do this page, unless I have anything specific location-based that I need to get to. So you've probably noticed that uh, on the top bar, I've got all white icons, and I've slightly colorized stuff, um, so it's been um, a little sort of like uh, tweak of mine that I've sort of kept a color ratio and I know that people do this and I haven't really done this on hideous scale um, I know people do it like with all greens or all blues and I think that can get a bit obsessive and it I understand how, why people do it um, and I probably would do it but a lot of the time you can't change the app icon so you're almost forcing apps onto a page that you might not necessarily use so this is my sort of version of it um, slightly less version of it. So at the top, you've got uh, YouTube, uh, one I do visit quite a lot for work purposes and just, you know, enjoying some videos. I've then got Messenger, Notion, which I have on my homepage now. Um, I have been tempted to move it down at the bottom bar. So Notion I use mainly for planning and plotting out items. Chrome, up in the top right hand corner, and that's used for obviously web browsing. Um, although I do tend to pull down from the top and uh, type in a search, so for example like some of the searches here that come up, and then what I do is click that search for the web button, so that's quite an easy uh, access point for me there. So the next line is mini, I guess, work items to some extent. You've got Slack, um, which I use for team communication for a few projects and, and companies that I work with. Evernote. Um, quick access again. Spotify and LifeSum. LifeSum occasionally what I do is track how much calorie intake or macro intake I've had during the day and it just gives me an idea for stuff so I use that um, if and when. And then the next line I've got Soon which is an app for capturing uh, recommendations. So I tend to get recommendations from you guys in the comments, um, from people on email and from you know friends and family recommending me programs to watch and I tend to put them down in my movies and TV sections and then any books and podcasts I want to listen to so it's quite a handy place to find all of that there. Um, Asana Rebel, that's my yoga meditation app, um, I have that one for the morning. Again you can sort of see that um, this quadrant, the three quadrants here, the Asana Rebel, Audible and Oak are sort of like my relaxation mindfulness sort of thing. Um, so I've got Asana Rebel for meditation, five minute meditations, um, sorry, five minute yoga sessions, um, and Audible for my audiobooks, which is very helpful. I really love the application, that's probably one of my favorites. Oak as well, 
um, so for oat meditation for meditations. Um, then the next slide, I've bought blue, uh, sort of kept the theme. So Berg is an optional app icon color. So I changed it to blue um, because it correlates to the, like the blue that I like inside the app. So I've got Bear, um, Auto Radio, Trello, and Twitter. Uh, Twitter really e easy to access. Auto Radio is a fairly new application. It's my podcasting app. So it's one of my favorite ones to access. Now, I actually found it accidentally. I can't remember how I found it, but I will try and credit the person who did recommend it to me. But I sort of fell in love with it after that. Um, it might have been an accidental find, <laughs> um, but it actually is one of the best ones that I've had so far. Trello, again, easy access to the boards, um, also the video calendar board as well that I've got. Now, you may see at the bottom there's a bit of a gap, and I quite like that because it shows off the wallpaper. At the moment, I've got that Todoist um, end-of-year review wallpaper on with the space option. I really like this one, um, but you've noticed there's a bit of space, in, and that's purely to see the wallpaper a little because sometimes when you're, you've got a hole full of apps, um, it sort of makes it... A bit distracting. Now you may see I've also got three um, core doc icons um, apps and that's a really strict rule for me at the moment. I actually learned this from the podcast on iTunes. Mm, the name escapes me. It's going to come back to me but I know it and I'm going to include it in the description below because they always talked about having three icon I icons at the bottom and it, making it look a little bit better, smarter. And it does. After a few months of using this, I've been very impressed with this. So I've got Todoist in the bottom left-hand corner. I've got uh, Newton, which is my emailing application. Uh, just a quote or a note, I do work with them, so I'm uh, obviously slightly biased. <laughs> um, I've got Calendars 5 as well here. So I've got my Calendar app, my email app, and my To-Do List app, all in one place. Now you're probably looking uh, in the next page and going, okay, um, you've got your main apps on that first page, but what's this page? Um, uh, 100 percent right it's more utility so you can see at the top i've got photos clock app store which i access quite a lot and extras so extras is all of those um other apple icons um apple um created ones and there are a few other ones that i've used as storage i tend not to use if i'm honest the um i tend not to go inside these folders i tend to pull down and if i need an application so for example if i'm like looking for um that one on the end uh, let's say it's like anchor then i type in anchor in and it will come up and it's just an easier way to access everything so that's how i tend to find apps this is more of a storage point because i have a ton of apps um and i've got files here so i've been using icloud drive a lot more um although there's airdrop between devices so i can use it on my laptop and send it to my phone sometimes i want to send a file or something uh, like that to send an email then i attach it to my i Cloud, <laughs> iCloud Drive, and I'm able to send it quite easily. So it's actually a really helpful app for work. Then I've got phone and messages and settings, all useful apps. And then I've, I think I mentioned this before. I've got to do, to do, blah, 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 to explore, to review, to reviewed, and to basic. So you can see all of that there. Basic is almost like all of my default apps. Um, you can see there's a lot there. So you can see here how many apps I sort of have in my to explore section. It's really ridiculous, um, still scrolling. Um, but again, these are all apps that I do need to take a review on. Some of them I have, and I could probably, like Moleskin. I know I've reviewed that one, and I can bring it over to Reviewed. Um, but 99% of the time, these are the this, this section here to do, to review, is the section that I'm actually checking apps out on. And Reviewed is pretty much uh, all the apps I've already reviewed or had a look at. So as you can see, it's a, actually a really simplistic process. Uh, a few notes of the sort of changes that I made. So you may have noticed that um, when I was going in apps here, you see that it's not that like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it doesn't zoom in like it used to. And that's mainly because I turned off that parallax. Um, I'll show you to do that in settings. Um, so you go to settings. Um, and again, you saw when I opened settings, it didn't do that thing. I pulled down from here. Um, and I can go in accessibility. Oh, accessibility. Hit accessibility. Um, and as you can see, I've actually got this button um, on and off labels. So that's actually one there. And it's reduced motion. And the reason I turn this off is because 
it just feels a little less stressful recently, especially going in and outside of apps. So I've reduced the motion of the user interface, including the parallax effects on the icons. Um, and that's really simple. So now if I were to go out, you can see it goes whoop, whoop. <laughs> so um, I turn that one off and that's mainly just a minor tweak, but it really does help. Um, I'm not sure why, I don't know whether it's affected battery that much, but again, it's just more visuals, uh, it's become useful. So uh, just before we go, I wanted to share a few of the apps, um, I've got something in my eye, <laughs> um, Auto Radio, um, this is a, the podcasting app that I use now, and, and mainly the reason why I want to share this is because I think it's a really attractive application. So when you open it, you've got all your regular podcasts, the ones that you listen to, and it also recommends you episodes from the most popular sections you listen to. And then it's also got um, audiobooks embedded in it, something that I haven't explored yet. But it saves your continued listening. So these are the ones I'm listening to at the moment. Sorry, something in my eye. Um, and then similar ones from here. So you can see all of the lovely stuff um, to access there. And that's actually 11 days when I haven't uh, gotten around to listening to that one. But you can quickly plus them and save them. I actually don't want that one. Um, but you can click plus and save them. So you've got audiobooks here. So that's a separate experience. It's almost like having Audible in there, but you pay a flat fee instead. I'm not sure I will jump to this just yet. Just, I'm going to check whether all of my favorite um, resources are actually on there. Moving over to there, you've got Listen Now. So these are the ones you're following. I listen to the Wall Street Journal tech news briefing. Um, you know, nothing to do with me having an interest in Wall Street Journal, but I just like the way that they do their news briefing. It's a quite short update in the mornings. And then here are the other ones I've got. And then they've got a breakdown of that. You can search items too. But this is the section I like, the following section. So I can go into newest episodes of stuff, downloaded, listening. And I, th I don't know, it's just visually impressive application. I can always view the top charts and also the categories too. So I can um, really dig a little lot deeper here. I'm just going to check whether my podcast is actually on there now. So this application is probably my most uh, uh, newest enjoyable application. Ah, yes, uh, my new podcast is on there. That's really cool. So I've just actually followed it. Um, that's very cool. Okay, so moving on, um, obviously, uh, they're obviously most of the apps I talked about here. I haven't really got any hideously new apps that I'm using on a regular basis. Um, so that's probably the general layout. Um, hopefully, it was a useful layout, and hopefully, maybe you can apply it to your iPhone or Android phone, depending on what it is. Um, but apart from that, I'll probably do another one of these in another three months when things change. Maybe I'll have a new phone, but at the moment, I'm just keeping with this. It's pretty consistent, a little bit slow on iOS 11, but something that does the job. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're not a subscriber yet, do hit the subscription button. It'd be great to have you here in this community. And if you're not a member on the Facebook group, feel free to join as well. It's free, and you get loads of great content. So, guys, make sure to have a great week. Keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.